Uh, Ty Byrne or Ty Fuller? Ty Byrne, um, I think, has been released. He's, he's headed in for an operation today. Um, and I guess the, um, the, yeah, the kind of high ankle issue, which is the syndesmosis, which is going to be anything between 10 and 12 weeks um, out of action. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a common operation these days and, and it's a procedure which a lot of players have had to go through so hopefully uh you know the operation goes well and he's he's back up and running and ready to go in about 10 or 12 weeks and, uh, Johnny and Rob on the weekend? um as in rob herring yeah <laughs> nasty blow uh just he's he's um you know he's sort of he'll be following a return to to play protocol and and um he's in he's in good form today uh a little bit sore, but as as expected. Uh, and Johnny is is already back into rehab and and, and working um, with the guys um, to you know to get himself back up to up to speed uh, to to train next week. That's the plan. Be all for the first that be fit for the match. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously Rob will come under the the return to contact and play protocols, which we which he obviously has to pass to to become. Fit and available for selection, but but Johnny um, Johnny is is uh, like other players who have, who have little niggles. He's just trying to put himself in a position to, to be ready to go on Monday. So how much of the, the losses of Ty Burn and uh, how well are you set to kind of compensate for that? Ty's been phenomenal, hasn't he, over the last couple of seasons? Uh, but like we've already had to do uh, during this championship, um, you know, we lost players. Before the game against Wales, and, and you know, we've had to adapt. I think that's the testament to the squad and to to the work that the players have put in. That even those guys who might not expect to be involved come in, they step in, and the the standard and the performance doesn't drop. So um, you know, it's really unfortunate that we've we've lost Ty, but we're very fortunate with the stocks that we have available to us uh, in, in his position. And um, like I say, other other players have. Have done that. They stepped in, and and you know the the performance hasn't dipped. So I guess that's um, as part and parcel of the, the game. Uh, World Cup, you could be without a player for a few weeks, and, and we might keep hold of a player, but someone else has got to step in. And, and I guess um, having the ability to to deepen our our experience in the squad and and you know playing in big games is. Is part and parcel of us um, being the best we can be, whether it's, you know, it's the best 33 in the World Cup, uh, or you know we might have to dig deeper to 40, 45 players, and 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 that's that's the kind of, I guess the the mentality was a couple of years ago to make sure that we had more than just 30, 31, 32 players, 33 players available that we 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 certainly have have drilled down into into players underneath those, and and we feel like we're much better place to lose someone like Tyg and, and not lose performance in players who come in. Like Vernon said, kind of early January, he's hopeful of making that Wales game. Did he have a setback and is he looking like he's featuring this situation? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, two things. Yeah, he, he he's I guess he's he's um, he's he had awareness of, of his calf and, and, and how that was responding um, and he's he's in a really good place but you know, he knows his own body and understands how that works, and um, you know, we're very hopeful, and I think so is he that he's in, will be involved at some point during the Six Nations. But but it's a sort of injury, uh, like a lot of those soft tissues that you you want to make sure you don't get wrong. Uh, you want to make sure you get it right, and they feel like they've got enough in the in the bank in terms of exposure to to the sort of high intensity of of the game. And, and how can we do that? We can. We can do that as much as we can in, in terms of training, but at some point he'll have to expose himself to to a game, and that you know hopefully that'll be over the next few weeks. Sorry, I'm going to give you the full bulletin. Ian Henshaw, Gibbs Park, are they around camp now? Or are they yeah, yeah, they're all around. Um, they're sort of dipping in and out of doing their rehab and and uh, sort of I guess t keeping on top of their own individual work um, along with um, staying connected to the group and and. Uh, you're hopeful that, that they'll all come back into contention over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Simon, just picking up on the points about Larry 
players fitting in. Like you look at some of them like Philly Bean and or Stuart McCluskey or Tom Keith going on. So many players are slipping in seamlessly and the performance isn't dropping. What are you working on with the players to have them primed to step up and perform so well? Uh, I, th I think the players take a massive part of the responsibility to make sure they know what they need to do. Uh, you know, Finlay's a great example, isn't he, that, that maybe didn't expect to start the Six Nations if, if Tiger had been fit, but he's stepped up and he's delivered in his, in his kind of essentials of his scrum and his line-out work, but then in terms of what he's done around the park, he's, you know, he's been exceptional. Um, you know, the more time we can spend with the players, the more exposure they have to what we're trying to do. And it's not massively different to, to what the provinces are doing. So there's plenty of continuity, I think, in terms of what we're doing and what they're doing in the provinces. Um, I guess the game is slightly quicker at international level. Um, they have a little less time to, to make decisions. You know, we'll challenge them on making good decisions and, and, and um, I guess being, being as effective and as accurate as they can be uh, in those decision making, uh, whether it be defending or attacking, but the players have massively bought into taking responsibility, so that if they are called upon, that they're ready. And and, and I guess they also know that if they don't take that opportunity, then at the moment we have such strength in depth that there's players who are ready to go and step into their shoes, and and that drives competition but it massively drives standards and it drives continuity and it drives consistency of performance. So I think there's a number of things that go along with players who, who step in and it's not filling in because they're, they're ready and they're, and they're good to go and they, they don't allow the, the quality or the standard of the group to drop when they, when they do come in. And then it becomes harder for that player that didn't make it to come and, and, and get rid of him, you know. So that's that's great for in, sort of for our competition for places and and uh, selection. It makes it harder for us to select uh, because we've got more players to choose from. Um, and just in relation to Hooker, obviously with Rob Heron's uh, position, uh, what's the position with Dan Sheehan? Uh, Dan again is is one that's coming back to to recovery and and we're hoping that he's available next week. Um, so we yeah we're, we we pulled Tom Stewart in the back end of last week, uh, partly because we were we were unsure a little bit around the other guys. So yeah, it's again we're probably pretty fortunate we have we have uh, a number of very good hookers um, hookers that have missed out on selection as well. Uh, but yeah, there's 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 real confidence that um, the three of the hookers that are available will be available for selection next week. Uh, and, and that's Dan, uh, Ronan and, and Rob all together. And uh, there's been a lot, lot made of the ball in place, that's uh, against France and I guess it added to the spectacle a little bit, but um, has that been something you as a group have, have discussed, trying to, I guess, clearly the conditioning of a team is, is working and having ball in play for as long a period as possible is, is a, a positive for this Irish team? Yeah, I, I don't think it's something that we've massively focused on. I think we, we feel we can, um, we can not just survive but thrive when it's it, it goes more than three or four five six phases and and we have to to outwork a team um i guess the you know the nature of the game sometimes when a, when neither side kicks kicks out they they, you know, they keep the ball in play a little bit longer um you know there wasn't a huge amount of uh, error and if there was error um you know uh, both sides wanted to play and, and, and didn't look to, to try and slow the game down, which maybe inevitably ends in having to have a set piece, uh, potentially a scrum off the back of a knock-on. Um, so I think there was, there was two sides who were prepared to, to play at high intensity and, and keep the ball in play. And, and you know, it, it certainly it suited our lads. You know, they, were, they were blowing and they were, they were working incredibly hard. Um, and, and it is reasonably high uh, but it's something that that I think is just the nature of the game at the moment um, there's a lot of games are, are sort of getting to that 40 minute mark and you know it, it's not something that we massively discuss or, or um, have, have a huge amount of focus on but understanding that the players feel comfortable and they can compete and they can really thrive in that space is, is great because you know, there is a big difference between 40 and 46 minutes, you know, and, and it may not seem a lot, but 
I guess at the intensity that the game is played at, then it, it, it can have an impact, certainly laterally in the game when, when people start to fatigue a little bit. Yeah, Richard, you question marks previously over whether Ireland could compete with the physicality of bigger teams. Now being France and South Africa in the last three months, so do you feel that any of those concerns are now dispelled? Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's just outside chat and and, and um, opinion, which which really, you know, we we have to. You know, we have to, I guess, uh, put that to one side a bit and, and work out how we're going to beat a team. Um, whatever attributes they have as a team, what, st what strengths they have, we need to make sure that what we try and do is, is about our standards and, and quality of our team, not so much about what, what the opposition have. Obviously, the, the, um, you know, the French and, and the South Africans have, have large humans that, that can... Can do some damage, uh, ball in hand. You know, we, we we dropped off too many tackles against France. We we weren't as effective in our in our collision winning, uh, certainly um, in our in our tackle game. But um, you know, I don't think that that didn't you know that didn't come to to bite us uh, in terms of the physicality. So I don't think it's something that we speak a huge amount about. You know, we, we talk about making sure that we, we work harder than them and we're smarter than them and, and ultimately we're, um, we're more effective and more accurate in what we do uh, and if, if we do that then you know, you're, you're still going to come under pressure against big teams but uh, you, know, you feel like you're going to be more effective as well if you get those things right. So more focus on ourselves I guess and not worry too much about what uh, the outside opinion is around us as a team and, and who might causes trouble and who, who doesn't.